HR Director Affiliates Group of Amy PLC. Carol's a business focused HR Director who creates impactful people solutions to deliver organizational objectives. She's worked across numerous um, sectors, retail, food, manufacturing, distribution and rails, a whole range. Um, she's working with Amy, uh, which is a leading infrastructure services and engineering company to support their inclusion agenda, driving change to improve performance. So a very warm welcome to Carol. Um, when it comes to tackling progression and development, so once people are through the door of ethnic minority colleagues, uh, many organisations implement initiatives without understanding what are the real barriers and don't work. Um, so um, Amy sought out the onset um, to identify what these barriers um, and you did it through safe space. Do you want to explain mm -hmm. a bit more about it, please, Carol? Yeah, so um, we, after the George Floyd events, we, we didn't really take any actions immediately because we hadn't really heard from our ethnic um, communities voices really. So we were looking for a great opportunity to do that. So we used Safe Space um, and Safe Space was an initiative where we, um, we pulled together a couple of our executive team, um, some of our senior leaders, and we invited people from our multicultural affinity group to talk to us about what the main barriers were to progression, to being heard, culture, what, what wasn't working in Amy for those employees to feel that A, they belonged, B, they could progress in our organization um, and C, actually, how did we attract people in in the first place? And whilst our inclusion strategy had been developed by people in the organization, it didn't meet their needs and they changed at least five elements of that inclusion approach. And a big part of that was recruitment, development, not just for them, but for the leaders in the organization. Um, and we very swiftly put into place the actions that the multicultural group had suggested, which included coaching um, the, the top 100 leaders in what it really felt like to be a multicultural employee in a predominantly male, white environment. Um, so the impact was felt almost immediately after we had run that safe space. And the safe space was facilitated by an external provider. Um, I, I chose a coach. I went for someone who was a coach who, who was an ethnic minority individual herself. Um, and we set that space up to be um, completely confidential, to, to, to enable people to understand that there would be no repercussions because uh, sometimes when you speak out, you know, something can happen afterwards. And um, we made sure that those individuals felt that it was truly a safe space to really start to change the culture within Amy, which we had been working hard to do. We were moving from a very hierarchical culture to a truly empowered organization. And we have been doing so for the last two years. Thank you, Carol. And for those um, Race Quality Matters co-created um, Safe Space in yeah. partnership with Mental Health First Aid of England to make sure people are safe to have these uncomfortable and challenging conversations, but yes. trust is key to it. And also, I think what um, yeah. Carol alluded to is what uh, Frank said earlier about, you know, you know your customers and in this Absolutely. case, your employees, what are their thoughts, feelings, concerns. Yeah. So for, for, from running Safe Space, Carol, um, what have you done? Um, and from the findings or what you discovered, yeah. what have you done to encourage and enable the promotion and progression of ethnic minority employees? It's been variable. And I think as Frank said, it's, it's not a process. It's, um, so we don't have a silver bullet. We've got, in our organization, we've got five different um, businesses. So it's, it's, it's worked to a differing degree in each of those organizations. We don't set um, rules and regulations for each of those organizations within our inclusion framework, they work to the maturity of each of those businesses. In our professional services business, we've had huge success. We have representation at every level in our organization. Um, and we, uh, the ethnic um, community are um, above the, um, 
the, the, the percentages of ethnic minorities within um, the UK. So we're at over 37% ethnic minority representation in professional services. However, we're only at 5% in our strategic infrastructure business. And when we look at why that is, it's not because we're not attracting people in. So we look at the statistics of attracting people in. It's because we're not hiring. And I think that is very much about the leaders are recruiting in their own image. So we're developing a programme with an external um, provider at the moment, which will enable people to understand why they're recruiting in their own image and why it's OK not to do that. And it's a cultural, again, it's another part of our cultural change. We are also going to be targeting a number of roles which are only going to be for underrepresented groups. That includes ethnic minority population and women, because we're under represented in women and those roles will be targeted for those people and they will be at middle management level so that we can start to build that pipeline into senior management roles and onto the executive committee we do have representation on the executive committee both at ethnic minority and also uh, in, in female groups um, we have switched our um employee voice, um, we're pulling all of our affinity groups together under what we're calling lead to engage. So all of the affinity groups will, will pull in um, under a lead to engage initiative where the voices are truly gonna be heard from bottom up and filter up through to the executive. So we're turning all of the hierarchical processes on its head. The other thing that we're doing is something that you talked about Ian, which is um, we're redesigning our ATS system we've got to design as much of the bias out as we possibly can so we're putting a new system in designing the bias out taking as many of the decision points away from the leaders that we possibly can in order to simplify the process and get more candidates through we're redesigning our employer value proposition um, and certainly now i feel that culturally we're in a better place to be able to say bring that talent in because if we'd have brought it in previously, um, the, the people would have floundered and would have left us anyway. And you'll notice that, or you may notice that this year for Race Equality Matters, I've actually got Amanda Fisher, our Chief Executive, talking about Race Equality Matters. Um, I didn't do that last year because I didn't feel that we were at a point in our journey where we should be talking about Amy being and an organization that, that people would want to come and work in. This year, I do feel that we are. So that's that's the sort of thing that we've been doing. But as as, as every speaker has said, it's, it's a cultural journey and we have a number of businesses that are at different points in that journey. Thank you. And I, I, I've sort of heard um, your CEO speaking echoes what Frank says, you know, about equity, mm. you know, more investment yeah. is going to the areas where there's yeah. greater struggle. And um, being evenly distributed, when we say that, um, have, and I appreciate it's, it's, it's a journey in silly days. What, what impact have you seen? Well, we're, we're definitely seeing um, more um, ethnic representation in our organisation. We're seeing um, people are being promoted faster, um, but not in every business. So we need to get parity across the businesses. Amanda is, um, who's our chief executive wants to have a monthly um, talent review of underrepresented groups and she's going to be questioning why those people are not being accelerated we're also removing some of the process barriers so um, we are taking out so one of the things we do joe which is which you'll find interesting is we do put loads of criteria that you have to get through before you can get a job so you've got to have 101 um, different things, special skills that you've had before you can get a job. What we're saying is, if somebody's sixty percent ready, you take a chance on them because uh, you know an, uh, an ethnic minority candidate or a, or a woman is not going to have those hundred pieces of experience behind them. We're also removing any salary um, discussions so that you know we get that equity in salary because we published our ethnic pay gap. Um, and we don't really have an ethnic pay gap, we, but we do in bonus because we don't have enough representation at, at, at management level. So at a simple back to basics level, we're removing some of those ridiculous barriers that just shouldn't be there. 
and that plays to your kind of culture ad versus your culture fit um, piece that you've said. I'm going to steal that and take that back to Amy because I think that's really helpful for us. Thank you. And just fi final minute, uh, what top tip would you share as a result of your experience in this journey? Uh, really hear what your multicultural employees are saying to you um, and utilise the insight that they give to you and don't get it wrong. So we, um, our ethnic minority can, uh, group have said to us, don't use, we don't like the word ethnicity, use multicultural. So what did we do when we published our ethnicity pay gap? We used the words ethnicity and they said, well, you know, why did you do that? Because we said to you, use multicultural. And um, I'm kicking myself ever since I allowed that to happen. Um, because we've we've dented the trust a little bit so we built we spent 18 months building trust and just by that use of that one word we've dented that trust a little bit mm -hmm. so make sure that you always listen and you always use the words that your employees mm -hmm. want you to use mm -hmm. i think showing you listening and taking absolutely action, yeah thank you very absolutely. much absolutely carol